How's it going everyone? Phoenix Rapunzel here and welcome back to another Infinite Magic Raid video. Today I wanted to briefly go over the announcement that the developers just barely released about the events coming this week. So the first announcement was about the Gift of Heaven. Um, this is a new event that they have. Uh, during the event, consume excellent and supreme runes to get points for rewards. They did mention in the announcement that you can exchange Sigmund for this time. Um, not completely sure what that means. Maybe it, it means that he, he can actually earn him. So that's going to be pretty cool. Um, and then we do have the announcement for the Miracle Wish event coming on Friday. So let me just pull this up. We've got this list here. Um, now, I just wanted to note that a couple of the names here are Legend Heroes and an Epic Hero. Those ones have not been released in the game yet. So Will and Terror and Hazier. Hazier. Um, I will try to get out information about those guys as soon as I can. Um, but those three, I think, will be new to the game. I looked through... The gallery just to make sure that they weren't actually in there before so like i said i will make sure to uh, release a video talking about those three heroes when we get more information so let's go ahead and start with the legend heroes that will be part of this miracle wish event for this weekend and then we'll talk about the epics so the first one is his sorrow so his sorrow is a bleed hero. Um, his basic attack has a double hitter. 30% chance goes up to 40% chance to inflict bleed. Uh, then his first active skill, 400% attack damage to a single enemy. Uh, puts severe wound, the higher version of that, for two turns. Restores self hit points by 20% of self max HP. And then if you up his exclusive, then he triggers the target's bleed one time up to six layers so he is a bleed exploder so to speak or he can be if you get his exclusive up so his passive he increases his bleed damage by eight percent for every one layer of bleed he successfully inflicts up to 10 times so he could deal 80 percent more bleed damage depending on how he lands it um, he restores self hit points by 35%. This is part of his exclusive of max hit points and then increases self attack by 40% for two turns whenever anyone under bleed dies. Um, so this is his blood mark. This is where his increased bleed damage comes in. And then his ultimate, we have a severe wound on an enemy target for two turns. Notice there is no percent chance. So that means that you don't need effect hit for that part. Uh, four stages of 100% attack damage each to that same target with 50% chance goes up to 70% chance to inflict a layer of bleed for two turns. Um, his exclusive also inflicts blade mark on the target, which makes the target take 20% more direct damage dealt by his sorrow, so himself, and then 15% more bleed damage. He can only put blade mark on one target at a time. So if you have a bleed team, he is fantastic for that. Pairing him with Reeves or um, if you have like a Natalie or some of those other bleed heroes, really, really, really solid there. Um, the next hero we have is Tuck. Uh, Tuck, let's take a look at his kit. I love his shield. His shield and his belt have the same face on it. Okay, let's take a look at his kit. So damage to single enemy, 7% 7, 7 of his max hit points. Extra 50% piercing rate, which means that it ignores defense. 50% um, more damage to targets under freeze. It cannot land a crit. So you can't build him for crit. You have to build him for, um, basically for hit points. And then 30% chance to inflict freeze on all enemies and all allies for one turn. So it's almost like he just pauses everyone. Is like, 
Okay, let's... Um, I guess it would be good for enemies because it, it locks them out for a turn. And for allies, it can help them with... Because I don't think... I don't think cooldown is affected by freeze. I could be wrong. But... I, yeah, I don't think it's affected by freeze. So that way, if they have a skill that's like on a... It's not like it needs one more turn to to refresh, then he can be like, okay, we're just going to pause for a second. Okay, you get your skills back. Go ahead and go. And then he gets an extra turn after casting Frostguard. So that paired with his first uh, or his basic attack um, can really, it can really hit pretty hard if he deals 50% more damage to targets under freeze. So if they're all under freeze and he, he goes again, then it could possibly make a big difference in a fight. Okay, so passive. He's immune to freeze. He gains one layer of icicle whenever enemy target is inflicted with freeze, which increases his damage dealt by 2% up to 50 layers. Up to 50 layers. So that means his damage could basically be doubled if, you know, he goes long enough. Um, then meanwhile he gains a layer of ice shield which reduces his damage taken by 2% up to 10 layers so basically like an increased damage by up to 100% and a damage reduction up to 20% exclusive let's see pursues and attacks a target enemy one time when he inflicts, inflicts freeze on them Ooh. So basic so I wonder how that would work. I don't have him, but I if any of you guys have him and you've got him to E3, I wonder how this would work with his um with his second ability here. Because he he can basically put freeze on all enemies, and there's a, a 50% chance of doing so if you use skill scrolls. So yeah, I wonder if he just, does he just like attack everyone? If he freezes everyone? Let me know if, you fi if, if you've seen that happen. And then his ultimate. Increases all allies, max hit point cap by 25% for two turns. Grants all allies a shield by 40% of his max hit points for two turns. Or no, not his max hit points. 40% um, of max hit points. So everyone's max hit points. And then cleanses their freeze effects. He additionally grants um, allies 50% effect res for two turns. So not too bad. He's um, he's built to be a tank, but like a control tank. With all of the freeze mechanics built into his kit. Is he possibly worth going for? I don't know. I haven't built him. His kit sounds really cool. But those of you who have him would probably know better than me. So let me know. And then the last one, the last legend hero that's not new in this list is Elec. So basic attack, 180% defense damage, single enemy, 15% chance to inflict stun, increases by 3% for every one layer of buff the target has up to 15%. So it could go up to a let's see with skill scrolls it goes up to 25% chance and then it would go up to about 40% so not terrible not yeah, not a terrible chance to place a stun especially on the, the basic attack increases all allies defense by 60% and tenacity by 30% for two turns so increases defense and then the tenacity actually reduces uh, crit damage. And then he also can grant all allies resist debuff for one turn if you get his exclusive up. Uh, passive reduces his crit damage received by 28%, transfers debuffs received by the ally with the highest attack to himself. This effect can be triggered up to three times until the start of Elix's next turn. Uh, Still two layers of a random buff from the enemy target with the highest attack at the beginning of the turn. So basically he's like, oh, you have like attack down on you. Let me take that from you. And you're good. I'm just going to hang on to this and you go do your thing. So 
so kind of cool mechanic there. And then the ultimate grants all allies. Then nah, nah, nah. <laughs> I can't talk. Grants all allies consolidation two for two turns. So he's got. It seems like he's got quite a bit of um, damage reduction built into his kit. Um, he can also get a shield on there. So, but yeah, redu reducing crit damage. This is reducing just damage in general, putting defense up, tenacity up. Um, so pretty solid, I would say pretty solid defense. Um, would I go for him? Maybe. If nothing else for the, like the damage mitigation and everything whether for himself or for um, the rest of the team. So those are the three legend heroes that we currently have in the game. Like I said, I will release a video as soon as I can about the, the three new heroes coming in. So let's jump into the epic heroes. Our first one that is not new to the game is Mori. So Mori, Nameless Brotherhood. We've got attack up one on um, the first or on the basic attack and that just goes on himself 160% attack damage and then first active skill 280% attack damage to a single enemy 30% chance to put on speed down two and then grant self stealth for one turn so he can't be targeted by um, by enemies like specifically when he has stealth on and then 40% chance to attach 50% leech rate when launching direct attacks. So whenever he attacks someone directly, there's a chance of him also increasing his leech rate, which means that he heals by a percentage of the damage that he deals. Uh, exclusive, he increases his turn meter by 40% when he um, inflicts a kill. So when he takes someone down, that's when his turn meter is boosted. And then restores self hit points by 200% of attack when granted with stealth. So if you build his attack up, which it sounds like you really need to build his attack up, then he can, every time he puts on stealth, which is most, I think mostly in this first active skill here, let's see, yeah, his ultimate doesn't have it. But if you pair him with someone who also does stealth, for example, like a pollen, who puts stealth on all allies except for himself, then he basically has a built-in heal to his kit. And then ultimate, we have 200 to 400% attack damage to all enemies and reduces their turn meters by 20%. Fewer the targets, the higher the skill damage. So that means if you have only one target, then it's going to deal that 400% attack damage. If you have five, then it's gonna only deal like 200. Um, and then exclusive additionally reduces turn meter by 10%. So instead of just reducing turn meter by 20, then it goes up to 30. So, so not too bad. I personally haven't messed around with Mori, but I mean, him, I feel like him pairing, or he would pair really, really well with like Pollen because of that built in mechanic with this, with, um, with stealth but I mean you need him at an e3 in order to do that luckily he is an epic so getting to that e3 um, isn't necessarily going to be that difficult so yeah not too bad okay so the next one is backins backins is part of the sword harbor guards this is backins right here so he has a burn kit also I mean he just he looks so angry. <laughs> okay, let's look, let's look at his kit. So, 30% chance to put burn on, 160% attack damage. Okay. 220% attack damage single enemy, 30% more crit rate if it lands a crit inflicts a layer of burn. Okay. Restores self hit points by 8% of max hit points every time he detonates burn. 50% uh, crit rate for two turns when he detonates burn and then he deals 20% more burn So he's really again. He's really built for burn 
Uh, AoE attack. 25% chance to place burn for two turns. If it lands a crit, then it doubles that to 50%. And then his exclusive three doubles the chance to inflict burn. So it could be 50% chance. And then if it crits, then it would go to 100%. So you would want to build him with... Well, it, I mean, it says effect hit and mastery. I would almost say if it lands a crit, because he's got some stuff here talking about landing a crit, um, I would almost suggest also looking at um, building him for some crit rate. If you can get his crit rate up. Um, if not, you can just follow, you know, effect hit, mastery and everything. But yeah, if you wanted those, like those extra mechanics here for like landing the crit, then it basically, it helps a lot with like the effect hit there. So kind of interesting. I don't know. I, I haven't built a burn team. Um, and I think it'd be interesting to try him out with some other burn heroes like Eric or Anna. Um, but I mean, it's not it's not necessarily OP. So again, if you have a burn team or if you have a place to use him, for example, like the Faction Abyss, then you could go for him. And then finally, we have Pacino. So this is Pacino here. Again, looks super sweet. Oh, and he's barefoot, except for the wrappings. Nice. Okay, so basic attack. 140% attack damage, single enemy, 40% chance to place inferior severe wound. And then grant self stealth for one turn, increases all ally speed and attack by 20% for two turns. And then if you up his exclusive, then he can put a shield on. Then grant self a shield by 8% of max hit points for one turn when a turn ends. So whenever he ends his turn or just any turn. Those of you who have used him, let me know. Is it just for when he ends a turn? Or is it when anyone ends a turn? And then his exclusive level 2 reduces all damage received by himself by 20% when he has a shield. So he's got some self-damage mitigation built in there. And then his ultimate. We have grants all allies a shield by 20% of max hit points for 2 turns. And then afterward does an AoE attack. And then exclusive restores all allies hit points by 10% of his max hit points. So, I mean, a decent, a decent support for sure. HP, speed, and effect hit. Effect hit mostly for landing of that inferior severe wound. That's really what it's, what that effect hit is for. Um, I would, I almost would just focus on the HP and speed for him. Um, so that he can continually like protect your team uh, with the shield and then just consistently taking turns so he can buff everyone. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about the effect hit, but it's up to you. So there's Pacino and that is all of the heroes that have been included that are currently in the game for the miracle wish event going on this weekend so let me know down in the comments which of these heroes would you be most interested in going for and why like i said i will be making a video about the new heroes that will be involved in this event coming up this weekend as soon as i can i'll make that video and drop it so that you guys have information about that for now you guys thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed my content please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out when i drop new videos again you guys thank you so much and i will see you next time peace